Hi. In this video, I thought I'd have a look at colour, specifically at the, um, the colours of the rainbow, so the spectrum of visible light that we pick up in our eyes, but also colours off to either side of that, uh, different parts of what we physicists would call the electromagnetic spectrum that contains waves of all sorts, radio waves, gamma rays, x-rays, but we're just going to focus today on the central part as far as we're concerned, the visible spectrum, uh, and as I say, just a little bit off to either side. Okay, so let's talk about light. In fact, we're going to talk more generally uh, about something called the electromagnetic spectrum. And essentially it's everything uh, that comes at us and through us as a wave. So the part that we uh, are most familiar with is actually quite a narrow section um, of wavelengths in here. And this is what's associated with uh, visible light. And of course we distinguish various colours in there, the things that we would generally refer to as um, the colours of the rainbow. But off to one side, so if this is the violet end and this is the red end of our spectrum, then off here uh, we have infrared and that's associated with heat. Um, I think primarily. And then further out still we get a whole band out here that we would associate with microwaves. And obviously that's important to us in the, in the context of um, microwave ovens, mobile phones and so on. Uh, and even further out uh, we get into the realms um, of radio uh, and TV and so on, all of those signals, and they can be uh, out, um, go out a long way here in what I'm going to mostly refer to as wavelength, and that's a symbol for wavelength, it's the Greek letter lambda. But if we go to shorter wavelengths, so if we come out the other side of our visible spectrum, out into the violet side, uh, then the first thing we run into is something you all have heard of, of course, it's ultraviolet. Um, further out still, uh, and we get into uh, the region of x-rays. Uh, and even further, of course, uh, we're then into the realms of uh, gamma rays and um, and even uh, cosmic rays, and they're all out to this um, short wavelength end of our um, electromagnetic spectrum. But it is a spectrum, it's a continuous variation of wavelengths uh, as we go through. And as I say, one part of it, just this little bit here, is what we associate with visible light, the stuff that we can see. And of course that's generally characterised by um, a spectrum uh, of colours, which begins up here at a blue end um, of our spectrum and ends up on the other side uh, with, uh, with red light. And in between we've got all sorts of other colours which I don't possess in terms of whiteboard markers, uh, but we've got, um, uh, we've got the oranges and yellows and, and greens and so on uh, all inhabit this, uh, this middle part uh, of the spectrum here. So it's a fairly rich thing, but it's the thing that uh, um, a spectrum that we can only pick up parts of uh, with our eyes, for instance. So it really is only this visible part uh, of the spectrum 
that we can detect easily. Our retinas are, are set up for this. Um, and there's a lot of uh, interesting stuff we could talk about in terms of colour, um, so our perception of colour and so on. Um, but I've written several blog posts on this subject, so uh, in the blurb that I'll put with this YouTube video, I'll include links to those. And if you want to learn some more about that stuff, you can uh, you can go and find it on my blog site. But I want to point out first, um, I think in this uh, context of our spectrum, that actually our, the human body can pick up more than uh, this range of visible light. And in particular, uh, we can actually detect some infrared. And this is the stuff associated with uh, with heat. Uh, and if you want to know how to do that, uh, which bit of your body is good at detecting infrared, um, I'd suggest just the back of your hand. We have a lot of heat sensitive nerve endings in our skin and the backs of our hands contain a good many of those. Just hold that up close to a radiator that's on or a fire that's burning or uh, a hot pan or an oven door or anything that's giving off um, a lot of heat energy and you'll detect the infrared that's coming off. Um, so although your retinas can only pick up uh, this particular range of colours, your skin actually is very sensitive, um, or the nerves in your skin I should say are very sensitive to infrared. And actually, even off the other end uh, of the spectrum into the ultraviolet, uh, although this isn't uh, something I would recommend, but our bodies are actually sensitive to ultraviolet. And again, the skin. Um, spend too long in the sun, uh, you'll know your skin turns red. It's detecting ultraviolet. Not in a very positive way, but it's certainly detecting ultraviolet. So actually, we're, um, we've got a little bit more sensitivity than you might think uh, to these things. But for today, I really just want to focus on uh, um, this visible range uh, in the middle. And it goes from uh, the violet end, which is our shorter wavelength part of visible light, all the way up to red, which is the longer wavelength end. Uh, and the converse of that is to look at these things in terms of energy. And the energy of blue light is the highest. Um, so this is our high energy end and the red then will be our low energy end. But that's only part of the story. Uh, this is supposed to be physics in the house. So we need to look at ways in which uh, we might be able to pick these colours up. And that's the thing I want to look at uh, next and, um, and in the little demonstrations that I'll try and run uh, thereafter. So there are several ways we can, um, we can get our spectrum of colours. Of course we can wait for a rainy day, um, in which case uh, if we've got a lot of raindrops in the sky and the sun is shining on them, uh, we might expect to see, um, if we're in the right position down below, a rainbow. Well, that's not really physics in the house, is it? But I'll try and uh, I'll try and show that um, in a slightly more stylized form later on. But a classic way of looking at um, the spectrum of light is to use a prism. And you may well have a prism in your house, even if you got it and don't know about it. More of that later. But if we put light, sunlight, onto one face of the prism, uh, we'll get out the other side uh, light which is um, separated into its colours. So we'll have a blue end um, of a spectrum of colours and a red end. So in fact the light has been uh, bent uh, inside this prism and that's a process called uh, refraction and glass is quite good at doing this. My little acrylic 
uh, prism does it less well, but it still does it. Uh, and uh, believe it or not, this uh, this process is associated with the fact that the speed of light is different for different colours, for different wavelengths. Um, a lot of school textbooks you might have seen will have told you that the speed of light doesn't vary. Well, that's true, but only if you're in a vacuum. If light is going through any other medium, uh, then actually the speed of light can change. And it changes in a way that's colour dependent. And so we get split out on the other side um, our spectrum of colours. So, OK, if you've got a prism at home, you can easily produce a, a prism to yourself. But in fact, anything that has uh, the shape of a prism. So although there's no way that I can show you this through a webcam, um, if you've got a, um, a window in your house that is scratched, then believe it or not, from the edge of that scratch, if you get your eyes in just the right position, uh, you should be able to see um, coming off that the various colours um, of the rainbow or the edge of a piece of glass, the edge of a, a, um, of a mirror, for instance, will do, um, will do just nicely. But that's quite tricky to set up. There is actually a fairly, um, a fairly easy way of doing it uh, using uh, a CD. Uh, and a lot of us, I suspect, probably all of us, uh, will have in the house somewhere uh, a CD. Now, on one side, you've probably got a label printed, all the information about what's on it. But on the other side, it'll essentially be what looks like a very shiny, highly reflective surface. But this is a digital storage medium. So, in fact, what we've got in here in a series of concentric rings are a whole series of gaps and dots that are microscopic in size. But these have all been laid down um, as a way of storing information. So they're storing the information associated with music uh, or a video or whatever it might be. And actually this has this behaves uh, in exactly the same way as something that we, this called a diffraction grating. And a diffraction grating is simply um, something with a whole series of very fine lines on here and this is definitely not to scale. These lines are actually separated uh, by a distance that's um, comparable to the wavelength of light that we're looking at. But we get something roughly equivalent to that from the back face uh, of, our, of our CD. It will behave in a very similar way to a diffraction grating. So I'll try and show you that in operation as well. Uh, even more um, interesting, if you can do it, and it's actually quite a challenge, and I'm, I'm not sure this is going to come out terribly well, but we're going to try it, uh, is to get a container with some water in. Um, I've actually managed to um, uh, use an old syringe, believe it or not, uh, not used for medical purposes, but for slightly different purposes. Um, and if on the end of its opening we can suspend a drop of water then what we can do is mimic what you would see in a rainbow. So we should be able to get sunlight coming in and observe on the other side um, colour coming out. So we'll see if we can do that as well. It's quite tricky to set up, uh, but I've shot, uh, I'm going to shoot rather, a, um, some clips that hopefully will, um, will demonstrate these various effects. And again, all of this stuff has been covered in my blog site, in one blog post or another, and I'll put all the links uh, to those in the details associated with this video. So I guess that's it for now. Uh, I'll run the um, I'll run the little demos uh, after I've finished speaking here and you can judge for yourself whether I've got this right or not. But in the process, what we've looked at, or what we will hopefully have looked at, uh, is this really important 
phenomenon in physics called refraction, refraction uh, the bending of light, uh, and we have explored a little bit uh, of the electromagnetic spectrum. Bye for now. turn the brightness down on the webcam because it's being a bit overwhelmed uh, by this um, spectrum coming through the prism. The sunshine is obviously very bright outside uh, but I think you can see uh, the, um, the colours there or at least the range of colours from red at one end uh, and, um, and blue at the other. But I can get these colours actually by um, using something that we've all got around our houses. So this is just uh, a fairly ordinary CD and you can see that as I rotate it in the sunlight coming through uh, we get a very clear differentiation of the colours uh, of the rainbow coming out. Uh, you can see very bright red through uh, the yellows and greens and so on into the blues uh, and the violets. So this is another very effective way that I would imagine pretty much all of us have got in our houses uh, for seeing the different colours. All right, and we can do this at all sorts of angles, providing we get it just right uh, with the incoming sunlight. Uh, it's actually very easy to see.